Good morning, everybody. Good morning to a monsoonal day here in the Philippines. Yep, there is a low pressure area and a monsoon inflow coming in from the southwest. It's pretty cool. I woke up real early this morning and I wanted to go check the status of the batteries. This is a hobby of mine. I'm excited to see what's happening in our time. And I was so excited because this wind blowing right here had that wind generator going good, boy. And it was producing some power. And it was so nice to get up early while it's still dark outside and go up there and see power actually entering into the batteries in the middle of the night. That is pretty darn cool man so that has been a definite game changer having that wind generator it's not putting out you know thousands of watts or nothing like that like a solar array could possibly do but i'm going to tell you what to have that extra three four five six hundred watts coming in it's two thousand watt rated but you know that would be maybe if there's a direct typhoon blowing at it but and winds like this, you know, it's producing me four to 600 watts. And that is some very usable power. That's a, that's steady power coming in where your air conditioner may not be steady power going out. Let me unlock this door for Joel. Good morning. So yeah, that was very cool. I'm still excited for that i know it's already been up here for a little bit now but it, it always keeps me excited because that's money being saved that's money being earned back for equipment i've bought and apparently during the night next door there was a brownout so see if we didn't have the solar system we probably would have got hot during the night and muggy and uncomfortable and got to worry about things thawing out in your refrigerator and your freezer and um, all those unpleasantries, you know. Well, I really enjoy it and I'm happy to see um, always the money being returned through the solar panels, through the wind, and providing us uh, comforts here and securities here and all that maybe we wouldn't have and we would be real susceptible to outages on the grid, storms, knocking power out, lightning blowing up transformers, trees falling on lines, cars wrecking in the lines, uh, power company having issues internally, uh, all of those things. And think about this. Every one that does like we're doing, puts in a solar system on their home here in this island nation, you are taking some of the strain off of the grid. So the the common fellow next door over here in the neighborhood or something, they don't have no budget for a solar system. They can't go buy all that equipment. Now, there's, I have seen some people get pretty ingenious um, making their own little battery packs. I've, I've got a friend up in the mountains here, a Filipino friend that's done it, made his own little battery packs and bought a little panel here and there and wired it all up and got an inverter. There's ways to do it, but let's just stick on the most part. Most part, Filipinos on their budgets, like many other people in the world too, not just Filipinos, even in the U.S., don't have the budget to do that. And because of the demand on electricity that causes electricity prices to go higher, um, it makes it even more of a strain for them to be able to afford to pay for electricity and they really, really have to cut their usage. And because the strain too, like here on the islands, of it growing and there's additional people always plugging into the power grid, big new buildings plugging into the power grid, it also strains it more that the common person may suffer more. So, I'm not trying to say we're doing something noble here by putting in solar system, but it does have an impact. Um, because when we take the house by house, 
if you can afford to do it at your home here in the Philippines, and I can afford to do it, we not only provide ourselves with security and comfort of power always, not having to deal with outages. What if you're on um, a breathing machine or things like that too if, with your health and there's a power outage? So we are lessening the strain on the grid. We're freeing up more for the power company to serve other people and at the same time providing ourselves with comfort and security and peace on our own so uh really something to think about and it doesn't have to be real expensive to put in a solar system i've covered a video on it before but let me tell you let me give you a quick rundown okay um i've been running just one inverter i've got two and i've been running just one inverter doing everything we do around here and you see we're living in a normal home you know big house um so aside of those three Airbnb style or hotel room style rooms that we did below. Just take those out of the picture. In just our living area, in our normal life, one 5,000 watt, it's kind of tricky because it's called a 4,000, but yet it's rated at 5,000, I don't know. But let's just call it a, between four to five. I think it's constant power at 4,000 watts. It can peak at 5,000 watts. So, that one unit has carried everything, okay? Running air cons here in the bedroom, all of that, we'll run them. Um, that unit, when I bought it, um, that model was maybe around less than 400 bucks now, I think's what it was, a little less than $400, 300 something dollars for it. Maybe by the time I paid the duty fees or whatever when it came in here, that I had to pay um, probably put me right around 400 okay so there you got $400 there then I bought some solar panels well initially I bought 12 panels and I'm trying to remember what I gave for those panels I want to say that I gave somewhere around a hundred dollars a panel I think back at the time when I bought those might have to refer back to some older videos, so don't hold me direct on these numbers. Prices have went down on the panels since then. I've got much greater panels I recently bought, way better panels, and for a pretty darn good price. But let's just say, when I bought those, I gave $100 panels. So say $1,200 in panels, $400 in an inverter. So at that point right there, I'm making power, but now that power is only usable if the sun's really shining and you've got to have a storage. Do not do a battery system and don't bother with a grid tie, okay? And I'm, I'm gonna sidetrack just a moment here on these thoughts. A grid tie here in the Philippines, when I talked to a couple solar companies and this guy Charlie that's got a solar company here that I bought these panels from and all, and I've conversed with several other people, according to, to even Charlie, that the law here in the Philippines does not allow the power company to write you a check. You cannot get paid. You can only get credit. And then, if you're net metering, putting power back out, and then you can't even transfer that and pay another account. So like if we want to pay Melinda's mom's bill, with credits that we earned off of our solar system, it's not allowed. It can only be consumed on that account. So um, that stinks. In my opinion, uh, don't bother with net metering unless you just feel like being uh, creating a headache with your system and basically giving power to them for free. Don't bother with it. All right, so now we had basically at the first 12 panels right there, they were 345 watts a panel, I believe is what they are, something like that, 335, 345 watts per panel. Uh, so you've got a little bit of wattage going on there. You've got your inverter going on there. Now, what do you need? You need batteries. So now you need batteries because you need storage. Well, when I first started this system, finding lithium batteries in this country was next to impossible. 
So in the beginning, I had no choice but to go with lead acid, and I bought some that were supposed to be solar rated lead acid. They weren't worth a crud. Just telling the truth, they were not worth a crap. A lot of maintenance, hard to get anybody to watch after them when we're abroad or traveling, because you gotta watch out, they'll evaporate off, and you don't want sails to get dry and all that. And you gotta make sure they don't pour regular water in there. It's gotta be distilled water. So, pain in the rear. And you don't get much use out of your power in a lead acid versus a lithium. Uh, lead acid, you've only got a very small range between full and discharge state. So you don't take it down to 8 volts or 7 volts or 5 volts. Going, look, it's still got some volts. It don't show zero. No, uh, you've only got a small range of power right there within just basically a couple of volts. And, um, and then that's that. So, stay away from the lead acid. Don't waste your time. Now, lithium is available now. And with some uh, agreements that the Philippine government has done with China on being able to seamlessly bring some products in from abroad, um, it's made it even easier. So when I bought my Felicity batteries, I gave with shipping and everything for four 200 amp hour batteries listed at five, what they're called five kilowatt hour batteries, for four of them, shipping and all to the port right here in our city. The whole ball of wax, the whole kit and caboodle as they say. Um, I was out at like $3,200. I just saw the receipt up there yesterday. Um, and they got here fast. So 3,200, we're gonna go with that number. And then we got the 1,200. So here we are now at 44. And then we're gonna add the other 400 on the inverter. So you're at 44, 400, 4,800. Now you got some switches and you got some wire, you got some railing, maybe the mount them, unless you just wanna rig them up yourself somewhere. So just don't do that. Mine are secure because there is strong storms coming to this country. So let's say between wire, disconnect switches, and uh, grounding, and uh, fusing, and everything else. All the little small peripheral stuff that makes it safe and um, functional. Let's say that we add in, let's say we add in another $500. So where are you going to be at right there? Um, maybe right now about $5,300. At $5,300 you have a pretty sizable, very daily usable solar system right there. I mean, it's not a joke. So uh, that's not bad. Now, if you hired a company in to come and sell you all that, that same system I just spoke of, um, man, they may hit you for triple that amount, just to be honest, you know? So, because uh, they're gonna really make profits for their time and labor. And some of these all-in-one inverters like I'm using, it does not take rocket science to set them up. It does not. They're all-in-one, meaning that you don't have a bunch of separate components spread out all over the wall, everywhere. Um, you can have just that unit with a disconnect in between your PV coming in, that's your solar coming in. It's got a positive and negative, keep them straight, make sure you don't cross them. You can take a voltmeter, check which, which is what if you're not sure. Pop, pop, plug it right up on the bottom. Uh, power coming out. If you just wanna run your most important things, just put you on a, a little breaker panel and with some outlets off of it right below it and run some lines to the most important things that you're wanting to run off the solar system. So it, you're either gonna do that way and you're gonna run power directly to those units, or air conditioner, refrigerator, and some lights or something, or you take and come out of your inverter directly to your main box on your little house here in the Philippines and you have maybe hire an electrician to take that power from the power company, put it over on a separate little breaker by itself, and then it feeds over into the inverter. So that way, 
if you're not making enough solar and you're running on short on power, that unit, there's little settings you can set in there and it'll say, okay, James told me that when the batteries get like this, but there's no solar coming in, that I can go ahead and charge those batteries off the power company. And so click, there it goes. And power starts going in batteries off the power company because there's no sunshine and you need the power. Or James told me only use 20 amps of power from the grid to slowly charge the batteries and do the rest of it with the sun as the sun comes in. All those settings are there, okay? And um, very simple to set up. It's not an issue at all. And here in the future, we'll do some tutorials on that, okay? We had already sprayed the upper half and we were going to tile it up to there and I said, you know what, I don't even want to do that. I am so tired of spending money buying tile. And I had a bunch of these tiles right here left, not a bunch, but enough for what I want to do. And I said, you know what, I'm going to use up some of this tile that I have and I have some scrap pieces that can make some of the small ones to the sides. And utilize that and just put it around the sink area where it's a wet area right there. Um, this probably be the main place that's going to splash around a lot. Beautiful day. Even cloudy days are beautiful days to me. Let's look at that contrasting color. Is that just beautiful or what, man? Absolutely beautiful. Now, I want to show you something and I'm going to get out of your way, okay? Yeah. So, when you spray this, don't move real fast and just stop right here. I want you to fade it up. And when you fade it up, oh, you go on up this wall here. You're gonna, it ain't going to matter to repaint it, okay? So, you got that line there. I told you to sign that, uh, sand that whole hard line off. You did. It looks good. So, now when you spray this, don't spray too heavy in this one spot. You go up and kind of pull away so it'll be thick and get thinner right here. Mm -hmm. Thick and then get thinner right here. That's blending, okay? And blend that together right there. Don't, don't just stop here and go up and down right here. Blend it up, blend it up, and then if we have to retouch it up and up there, it's okay. I hate holding you up here, but <laughs> this is Mike. Mike, come by and popped up and visited him and his wife. Now, what'd you say your wife's name was? Myla. Myla. Yeah. And they're out buzzing around doing tours from city to city, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. It's nice to meet you, James. And another Texan, but they're about to go to Garen Farm uh, down in San Joaquin. So I'm going to let them get underway, but been showing him around the place here and he's getting to see all of my uh, little climbing structures here. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Wish I could have been here on a sunny day. Showed up on a monsoon day. <laughs> well, I wasn't sure if we could just stop by like we did, but... I said, let's go look at the house anyway. It's kind of funny because he's in the same hotel right now that Mark, uh, every man has a story, and several other vloggers are staying at in Elo Elo. So you showed up same time there in town. Yeah, and it sucks too that they showed up when the weather's bad. Yeah. They also came to visit Elo Elo while the weather's bad. So, but it's a pretty nice place. Well, they have a car waiting for them down there, Melinda, so we're yes. going to have to let them get on the Garant yeah, Farm. Yeah, because we're going to Garant Farm also. We're going to explore in the Yeah, yeah. Y'all going to make the ascent to heaven? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're going to check the area out. We're going to go to the house today. Yeah, I think you'll enjoy that down at Garant Farm. I'll let y'all get on your way there, but it's a nice place to go to, though. So we just had some pop-up visitors, which I was actually happy to see. Uh, it's nice to have guests come by here. 
And that was Mike and Myla from New Braunfels, Texas. Mike and Myla. Um, they seem really nice and nice to enjoy and visit with and all. They're just out exploring the Philippines and bouncing city to city, checking out places. Ambin right here is still coating all the stone. He has been knocking it out around here. Boy, that stuff is strong smelling. He's already done all these little accent pieces that we've done here and here, put it around with all the stone. He's done all the black around front so far also. Yeah, it's looking really good. So Joel finished tiling up there in that CR and Mom Mott finished up the paint. And we're down here in one of these guest rooms. Uh, this one here, we have been waiting to do this tile backsplash up here but I've got a little bit of an issue on the planning on my outlets because they stick up the outlet box sticks up maybe half inch three quarters of an inch and then with the face plate it's going to stick up even higher they should have been down just a little bit lower uh, but we were if we would even been able to cut this tile here a little higher but we were working with what we had so we may put a decorative border around the top of that and that'll solve my box and my faceplate issue as well. So we're gonna look at what we have here that we might be able to use. Well, I went out and swam in the ocean for a little while. My friend Patrick and his wife Leah, um, they came over and brought a couple of really delicious coconut pies. My goodness, boy, some good old buco pie. And we just kind of sat around, hung out with each other, and Patrick and I went wading off out into the ocean, out to a sandbar, and he didn't want to get completely soaking wet, so he kind of uh, just hung out there with me while I acted like a little adolescent kid. Because <laughs> that's the way it is. Yeah, that's the way it is. Well, um, they just went home, and the guys are struggling a little bit on work because of this rain, but we're making some things happen slowly. Let's go look up top. Hey, lay that ladder down. I don't want it to fall and chip the tiles. <clears throat> Flooring's in, drains in, uh, the little backsplash on the wall. We got some touch-up paint to do around it after that little uh, grout around the edges right there dry. So I've got the sink base for this. It's gonna cover up a good proportion of that right there. Looks good. It does.